Hello guys, welcome to One Time Scraper series and in this video we're gonna extract data from Google search results page. So here we have the list of results with the title, the link to the particular uh, destination point and uh, some sort of the description. And if you just open Chrome Developer Tools here, I will see that the, re the request string uh, here contains lots of parameters just where is my okay developer tools here so if you just update the page and just go for this search search query and scroll down a bit uh, I'll see qu uh, query string parameters here so qu quite a lot of uh, parameters here basically and the only one that we, we would suppose to be changing is this one uh, which is called just the Q which stands for query and that's actually the query phrase that we're supposed to be kind of looking for and I just I just grab uh, all this stuff here and copy and okay let me just delete delete my previous attempt to write this video uh, and also delete this one and just create a new, a new folder Google Scraper oh it's a bit of a typo here okay Okay, I need to import requests. Along with beautiful soup. Okay, just try to make it always on top. Okay, beautiful soup. And also the JSON package and the CSV and let's define the class called Google Scrape so here I'll create a variable called parameters params which would be uh, some sort of a dictionary and I just paste in All the parameters that were grabbed from uh, Chrome Developer Console here. So I need to make it a Python dictionary format. So it's a bit of a, of a routine. Copy paste job here. Okay, I'm not sure what is this. Okay. Probably nothing here. Well, it's that's a bit strange. So that's just um, okay. It's really empty. Okay, now leave this empty as well. I did already test this kind of stuff with a bare uh, browser uh, URL address with these parameters in a raw, raw format. I didn't yet test this with uh, this sort of payload with uh, parameters payload, uh, which is actually equal to. Uh, which is kind of the feature of request library so this might have got a bit wrong first and okay so query I'd, I'd like to leave the query empty for a while mm. okay and let's 
had the fetch method and the URL okay and also we want the base URL here and this will be equal to probably like this okay mm. okay so response is equal request get self base URL and the parameters okay and I hold my breath and try to run this okay so just before that uh, okay let's drop the quick run function here so solve mm. And here would be specifying um, the URL. Well, not the URL, but probably um, uh, query. Be the query. And we want uh, okay. So self. Rams query. So that that this be the Linux mint. Yeah. Mm. So it uses the base URL array, okay. Parameters. Okay, so self parameters as well okay and this now this line it's more logical to put this in the fetch mm, like query like this and here let's make it Linux meant as a parameter it as a parameter Linux meant quick driver now create a scraper object sure that has the static status code of 200 so let me just quickly okay the console oh it's, it's a bit one one so Google scraper okay iPhone 3 Google scraper pi okay this is good so we have the response uh, of 200, which means that actually we have re retrieved the response. And I, I really hope that the response we get there in the request is exactly like kind of this one. So um, I just uh, opened the source code of the page over here. And in order to not torture Google, uh, we'd like uh, just for the debugging purposes. I would like to implement the function that is called actually uh, write write HTML. Well, maybe store response. I call this uh, 
restore response. String to write the to write the file as HTML file. Uh, HTML file. Write response.txt and print. Down in here. Mm. Oh, what am I doing? So response to So we're not going to specify the file name by the user here. It's it's not needed really. And also, uh, we want to do all this stuff only in case if response the status code is equal to two hundreds. Else. Okay, so here in the run, so we want to, to fetch and then we want to actually solve. Okay, but um, so what actually we so let's actually return this response here. So response would be equal. To self dot fetch and then self dot store spoons. I don't really like that method name, well, but on live streams it's really hard to give the good names for your methods during your classes. Store spoons and spoons and so. Okay, I hold my breath and try to run this stuff again. Okay. Okay, yeah, the only thing here is actually I don't, don't want to print the new line, so make it like this. Okay, but uh, I'm not going to run this one more time to check this line. Instead, um, instead I just want to create another method called load response. And remember that all this is just for like kind of testing purposes, so the production kind of ready code, production ready scraper won't really need this store response and load response methods, but, but you can keep them still. So, um, yeah, and here again, we go open. Now open the stream to write, uh, to read, uh, to read, uh, to read the file. As HTML file. And um, so let's call this HTML. This empty string here. So four line in HTML file. No, not like this. No, HTML file dot read. This we want to populate the HTML variable plus equals line like this, and we want to return HTML. 
so this would be the strain basically and what we need now so just going to go into the command this response for a while and this line is kind of not needed anymore well let's just command this now as well and oh well, let's call this again like html is equal load a self sorry self load response like this and let's print the html too just to make sure that okay we got the response text and now the only thing left is just to hope that the needed data is actually within this gibberish here but but we'll find that later on a bit a bit later on okay now uh, we need actually to create another method called parse def parse self and html uh okay uh, here we'll define the content variable which would be uh the representation of the parsed content so we'll use the beautiful soup function to parse uh, the html response here so HTML. and we'll use the alexml parser to handle any kind of sort of malformed tags okay so we can prettyfy that content but probably we don't really need that at the moment i don't remember how the prettyfy is spelled correctly okay print content prettyfy i hope i hope this is just uh, written correctly well i might be wrong though so here one self and pass HTML as an argument. Okay, so maybe just misspell something here. Still can't learn. Okay, so now it, it seems to be a bit better. And this is already a parse text. Well, not really that much of something useful, it seems, but well, maybe. Well, we'll hope. To this page kind of contains what we actually need so we would be actually now checking that out so now let's go to the source code here um, and try to search for the title so let's search for this one okay and it is located within the span with the class of this one okay mm, and also okay so maybe mm, not sure uh, what your reference to use here but, but let's just search for this particular class CSS class okay okay seems like i'm sorry for that russian words guys just google knows that i'm from ukraine and that's the reason why it prints some results okay just just a bit wondering why only two of those oh that's probably okay yeah so this 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 is actually what we need so let's try to ex extract the title and now we would actually uh we'll know if if we get the right response correct response or not so title is equal content dot find all mm. so that is spam is equal to this one okay 
Hold on, guys. Uh, ho hold on a bit, guys. I just get back in a second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, for being out for a while. Okay, now I'll just hold my breath and try to run this again. Okay, why am I making this column all, all the way? Uh, print. print all. Actually, doing one here. Of course. Oh, just <laughs> I, I couldn't write the find all <laughs> correctly. Oh my god. Uh, okay, but unfortunately, we have absolutely nothing here. So that. I'm a bit concerned now because, well, probably it's not kind of the right response. Mm. Okay, uh, let's actually try to search for to search for text, certain text here. Uh, just to understand. Whether actually doesn't seem to appear there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just import regular expressions, just a bit a bit to use a bit more flexible. Okay, so fortunately, it seems like I actually have. Okay, hmm. <laughs> you know, guys, this would be really interesting if the response that we have with uh, uh, this request library is different compared to the one that we have actually got in. Uh, uh, in the browser, well, uh, let's probably try to open this response in the browser. Okay, so this seems to be definitely different, and I don't know why, <laughs> to be honest. This is in Ukraine for some reason. Ah, well, that's because I didn't use uh, the headers. Well, maybe that's the reason actually. So could have used actually the headers in my browser uh, j just to well I could have used the headers as well mm, not sure if that is needed that much okay nevertheless let's actually try to to be looking for here okay so let's get the very first title and paste this in Come on, you don't see this. Uh, mm. Hmm. This is really strange. This is really strange. Well, okay, I just want to get rid of this nasty Russian words. So, yeah. Uh, actually, I will use the particular hitters from here. So, just, I hope, I actually hope to get the, the same response. 
Okay, so just copy this here and let's define the headers. guys this takes a little bit more time but I just really want to make sure uh, that what I see in the browser is the same as what I see in the HTML response the request language so Here's here for the encoding would kind of end up being not exactly what I suppose that to be but okay so let's actually reload let's actually store this HTML one more time here so so parameters well, I'm not sure and the parameters are in the right way well I hope well can I can I specify this as the payload actually and I'm not sure how, how exactly that is done I remember in, in the request library I remember that the headers are specified like this so we can say just yeah, self headers Okay, now also just try to store this file again and run the scraper, so payload. Okay, I'm sorry guys, just just hold on for a while. I want to Google for uh, Python requests documentation. I don't remember how to specify this the payloads. Oh come on. Well maybe I should have paused the video but this is really Oh, what's going on here? This is kind of part of uh, the development process itself. This is very strange. Nothing can be reached here. Okay, the get request. Spouse this guys. Mm. Yeah, query string parameters. Okay, so so this this is called the params. Okay. Okay, so not the payload, but the params. Okay, now this should work. Okay, mm, now let's actually try to open um, this new response. Mm. Oh my god, what is this? Oh, that's because something is wrong with the encoding. So, I'll just remove this line here and run, run it one more time. And okay, now it looks better. Okay, so now this is in English actually. 
Okay, so now it seems to be much better. So Linux Mint main page. Yeah, so well I would actually try this one more time. Yeah, don't need the encoding anymore. Mm. Okay. Seems seems like <laughs> it seems like when I use this particular cookies that my browser used, it actually kind of much better now. So I just can extract the titles correctly with using this these classes. Okay. Mm, so now I can use the list comprehension to extract only the text. So I'll just say title text or tile in content final and let's see the result okay and let's also print the len of the title it's six okay not much but still uh yeah Well, okay, so the next thing to extract is actually, well, I wonder if, so linuxmint.com over here, so I now need to find, so what is this actually, this link, okay, but where am I supposed to, so here is the h reference without much of class definition or any parameter mm. so I need this minux mint .com. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's too many links. I'm not sure which one exactly is to, can, to use here. Well, I can actually use this inspect here. Uh, so, site. Oh my god, I've never seen this sort of tag before. Site. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh man, I've never seen the tag before. Tag name. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, this is so cool. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's try that. Let's try that actually. So, link. Doing the text for uh, link in. Content dot find all. Oh my god, side tag. Never seen that before in my life ever. Okay. So, oh, single quotes. Class is equal to this one. Okay. Mm, so that was six. See the link. Um, okay. I'm not sure what is this one. Well, not. Well, basically. Okay. I don't really like this sort of. Wikipedia org, Wikimix Mint. So, well, no, this is probably not the very kind of thing I want here. And 
Okay. Okay, so let's inspect this one instead. And well, this is great. But what about the link? div class r oh my god so it has the link the links it have basically until the next div class s so Okay, div class R. <laughs> My god. Okay. It's also six. Okay, and the very first link. So I'll probably just the next element of beautiful soup would give me what I actually need. Okay, well, I'll just I'll just try that. So okay. Mm, we don't want the text anymore for now. Uh, so, well, okay, so div plus r. So let's see what actually he gives us as a response. Okay, mm, returns the entire element. Oh, let's try the element and hold my breath and try the H reference. Oh, does this work? Okay. This is so cool. So now it seems to extract the links correctly. So what I used here guys is just the next element. What does this mean from the beautiful soup perspective? So when we have the, the mm, some sort of a class and then it has the subclass. The, the next subclass is called like the next element. So for some reason, well, they're actually kind of done recursively, but they, they are structured recursively. But the next element attribute does allow us to actually access the next element. That's pretty logic. And the next element here uh, of the this R uh, div class R is actually the exact H reference that we need here and we just extract this H reference attribute from from this link and that's why that's how we get actually our sort of uh, link and also okay let's try to, to extract the description text basically so for description in content.final div uh, class s I just remember that was called s so this is really strange for class names for, especially for the Google well <laughs> I'm excited to be honest Okay, class like this. So let's just try to see our descriptions here. Mm -hmm. Is that again easy to use? Up to date, blah blah blah. Okay. Mm. For some reason, it also scrapes some. Trainer words, not sure exactly why. Well, but still, still this this seems to be really kind of better. So just to try to put this a bit upper. Mm. Also, okay. Some Unicode char characters apparently. Well, okay. Mm, and okay, but why on earth does it use kind of this 12? Hmm. 
Or what if I just use not all the elements, but the first six elements like this? Well, that's 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 much better. So probably within the div of class S, it also has some kind of different, some different something something else there. Mm. Something's probably kind of wrong with the encoding here. Oh well, that's probably because I've just turned off the encoding, so the Russian. Is not represented correctly. Well, may maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. So, well, it's actually okay. So let's c count them by, by hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, okay. So this just seems to be that kind of okay. Well, let's try to bring this in a bit more well well formed way so uh, now we need to loop over the range of the lengths of the indexes of every single uh, list here so for index in range from zero to length of whatever of these guys, well, not not whatever of these guys. The description is actually the length of twelve elements for some reason. Probably it's not the very prop, the very precise uh, class selection here. But well, maybe just hold on a sec. Just mm, can I uh, span class st? And this is actually. Plus F. Okay, so this span plus ST. Okay, guys, just just hold on a sec. I just wanna. Um, I just wanna print the description one more time. Maybe maybe this is a little bit more precise way extracting the descriptions okay something has gone definitely kind of wrong here oh f no spam with the class st oh my god class here well I'm still not sure why this Russian appears here but Probably this is Russian. Okay, that, that doesn't really matter that much at the moment. So it seems like the length is now being kind of six. So just just one last, mm, just one last test here. So I'll just want to type, print the length. Okay, now that's that's much better. So for index in uh, the range of from zero to length of say title. Now we can use basically whatever of these guys. So they all are of length of six. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's just define the item variable for a while. And just to make it easier to print. So here we need mm, title. And this would have been the title indexed by the index that we've just created here. S then the link link index and description. This dumps function stands for just 
I want to make print this as a string and want to make add some indentations. So I say just item and indent is equal to two. So now I hope to see okay to extract the data in a more pretty pretty printed format. Okay, then expand the link. So now again easy to use up to date Linux distribution. Well uh, I kind of already like this, so uh, you know, guys. One one more thing to consider is actually to so well now we have uh, managed to to scrape one page, and I just want to try if that would be kind of easy to scrape some more pages. Well, th this might not be that easy and I won't probably be uh, spending that much time on that because I have another video that handle the co kind of covers pagination as well. So th this is not uh, really about the pagination. Well, so I just didn't test this before. Mm, and let me just, uh, I just want to compare this. Mm, I just want to compare this to request strings uh, so what would be the different with the pagination with, with, with the different pagination so I just go for the second one and I just copy this so okay my god this seems to be so weird uh, Okay, so the search is the same. I can just get rid of the search for a while. Okay, so it's already a different. Okay, uh, well maybe. So the parameters are kind of different there already. Okay, mm, let's see the parsed uh, str uh, query string parameters. So start ten. Well, I actually can retrieve this page, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure of of how exactly the log uh, the logic behind this parameters work. Mm. So this seems to be like a, it's kind of some sort of anti scraping measure, or maybe just code obfuscation things like that. So to make it. It's kind of doesn't have the page parameter here. Okay, so we will. Uh, so, oh, well, at least in this video, we will uh, be happy with just being able to scrape the results as is from the very first page. And you know, guys, I don't know how about you, but me, for me personally, well, when I when I'm searching something on the web I, I don't remember when did I kind of uh, switch to the second page so well maybe that was for about 10 years ago <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but but recently I, I don't remember that I've switched to the second page so always so if you just don't see the the response on the very first page you just going kind of you know just uh, change your para change mm, change the query to find uh, what you need. Well, from the web scraping perspective, that's uh, for sure is not an option for when you're doing some scraping. It's really good to scrape as many results as possible, and that's actually the reason why why I wanted to. When I had an idea in mind to create um, some sort of command line tool that would allow uh, actually to. Uh, to use some sort of Google command line interface. Well, I'm not sure why exactly that uh, might be needed for, but still. Well, so. Okay. Okay, let me just pause the video for a while to see if maybe if I will, would be actually able to scrape some more pages and if not I'll just end up as is okay okay guys probably good news here so I've discovered that this parameter along with this one actually remain the same 
this I changed changed but well I will just try to uh, correct this start uh, parameter which stands for um, probably for some sort of a page number so um, okay let's compare what we have no parameters here so eyqoqjs underscore l oh we actually don't really even have this um, okay so I just want to try to go for another little trick here so I just try to command out the existing parameters and try to make kind of new parameters here that's you know like that's really interesting research problem here so I will just try to loop over this value and if that kind of works mm, well that would be cool <laughs> that would be really cool so I just try to manually change that if that, if that works ever then I'll make that changed automatically Well, Google is really kind of complicated, and I really hope that YouTube is not going to block this video for. I'm not sure if scraping Google search results is actually legal. Well, according to robots.txt file of the Google, it doesn't seem that this search is kind of allowed by scrapers, but I, I don't see that it, it's getting blocked so well if you don't get blocked it doesn't really still yet means that you're allowed to do this well so that's kind of not really easy question so okay I just try to use the parameters as is and well let's let's start from from 10 here um, and let's try to write actually another response couple of responses so just to see um, if they're different okay so another response okay no not here um, so I can just update no not the source not the source update here um, okay and if I just now use one here and run again, okay, uh, and update again, okay, seems like okay. So I can use um, okay. It seems like I, I got an idea how to make this. So I can use the initial parameters. Um, Or to scrape the results, the results of the very first page and pagination parameters to scrape results from all the other pages. Mm, okay. Mm. <laughs> okay. So one one more task just to make sure that actually the other okay the other pages has the same classes CSS classes well it seems like they do okay okay th this is guys you know this is really getting interesting like I feel really excited about this stuff so um, 
now it's time to write the crawler part um, the crawler part here mm -hmm. so this would be here in in the run uh, but what about the URLs? So it's not about the URLs. The URL would always be the same. We, all, we would only be changing the parameters. So, okay. Okay. What I want here is actually... Um, let's command this out. So I need to loop over the range of pages. So for page in a range from 0 to well let's try to scrape five pages okay okay just before doing that mm, <laughs> okay guys just just before doing that I also need to implement the store to CSV so I would be running the uh, I would be running the crawler just once in order to avoid torturing Google so I'm sorry for that uh, let's just let me just quickly implement the uh, right CSV function here so self <laughs> so let's make okay probably probably I'll just make the results just make the results list over here mm, and here instead of creating the item I would say just self dot results dot append like this and say if then results so, so if there is something results in that case want And also specify the field names. Field names. Um, self results. Take the first element and the keys. Okay, let me just quickly check this out. So, after I've parsed, I just want self write CSV. I hold my breath and run the script. Um, and I got the CSV file here. Mm -hmm. Let's open this in LibreOffice just to make sure it looks. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, so the title, the link, and the description. Well, this is pretty cool. So the CSV is written correctly. Okay. Okay, that's that's great actually. Uh, well, I also can add some sort of. Okay, so we don't need to write this CSV for now, or, or actually we can can write that. So, well, in any case, uh, we need to loop over the range of pages. Oh my God, I don't remember how to. Step. Well, I can actually multiply by 10. Okay, that's probably. Okay, let's just print page multiply by 10. Uh, yeah. No, just. Oh, okay. Just gonna keep it for a while. And 20, 30. So, okay, I also need to start from, let's start from 10 to 15. Oh, okay, this is gonna, oh, this is gonna get, get a bit warm here. Okay, nope. Not like that. So, only. Okay, great. So, and this would be actually else. So this page. Uh, I'm just testing here um, how we're supposed to. Uh, how do we supposed to distinguish the very first? results page from all the other pagination so initial page and then we go to the, all the other pages okay so here we would be fetching okay but um, how are I supposed to parse okay Response. And well, this would be a bit of co repetitions, but still, I think we can actually close our eyes to that. So, okay. So we just want to parse. Okay. And one more thing so yeah and self fetch so um, I want to pass the query uh, a bit earlier okay so no not the query okay Let's call this is 
first. Okay, this would be the boolean. And say if is first, then we'll return this one. Not the boolean value, but the page. Let's call this page. So, if, if not page, mm, self params else params is equal self. It's not the. Oh, this thing. Okay, initial params. Imagination params. Okay, copy. Mm. Just return for a while. Mm. I just want to print. So I just want to check the logic of changing the parameters uh, when we're changing the page. Mm. But hold on a sec. Mm. In the parameters, yeah, we actually need this actually set to, set to nothing first. And here, uh, rams. So how they're called? Start string page like this. Mm. Okay, I hold my breath and so pause the page here. Okay, let's try. No attribute params. Uh, of course, it doesn't. Uh, so this would be. Uh, and does this still have the query? It kind of doesn't. No query. query here. Well, it also does have the the query. Okay. Mm. So I also need the params. Query equals query like this. <laughs> okay, so initial page start one. No, it's not good. So did I multiply this by ten? Well, actually, no, it's better to do this here. Okay, so start 10. 
Okay, something has gone wrong. So, so far as HTML is not defined. Uh, okay, so we actually don't want to parse the HTML, we want to parse this post.text. Another error for the response is now being empty since so non type, but it's okay. So, um, and in this case, we'll just oh, also the page would be just fine, I believe. Okay, okay, so let's just avoid using the parse now let's check so the very initial parameters here um, query linux mint and then query linux mint 10 and then 20 and then 30 and 40 okay guys so this should work should have this should have doesn't actually mean this would work but still, I hope, I really hope this kind of would work. So, well, at least we're changing the parameters accordingly. So, uh, I hold my breath and actually try to run this kind of scraper here. So, I don't need this kind of anymore. So I just hold my breath and try to run. And if I did everything kind of right, then in return I would just have this uh, CSV file with more than six entries. Not sure how exactly that would be six multiplied by five or four, maybe not sure. Okay, just let's do this. Mm, uh, just to add a little more debugging information here. Um, Oh my god. Uh, well, okay, let's just make this at the very end so I, I won't really reproduce the URL again. <laughs> okay, URL. So I would be able to see actually how the requests are going. And one more little thing, so in order to avoid getting blocked by Google, so I just want to add a delay here, so just import, import time. And here after making a request, no not here, but here, so for page. I want same time dot sleep and let's actually give him the five seconds this would have been a bit long but I just don't really want to get blacklisted by Google at the moment so just a five 
five seconds response here. Well, yeah. <laughs> Stop being afraid and just run this, okay? Okay, object has no attribute parameter params. Mm, that's that's reasonable. It really doesn't. Mm, now the self params this time this would be just the params like this. Okay. Yeah, the euro is really big, but we get, we got okay. The status code code hundreds, which is great. So now it's fetching another page, and hope this is just another another result page. I really believe Google doesn't like this, but just just for testing purposes, Google, I'm I'm really sorry. I don't mean torture you ever. Okay, writing results. Okay, guys, the moment of truth is about to come now. Oh my god, seems like it works. Just let me see the results in the LibreOffice one more time. You know, I just, I, I've never been scraping Google results, search results before, that's why I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, so okay yeah <laughs> my god this seems to be working <laughs> yeah it's cool <laughs> oh my god yeah that's so cool so we have successfully scraped up to I'm not sure four or five uh, pages from Google search results and this is really so cool okay guys so um, I, I just actually, I actually lost the count of time of how long does this video uh, is going on and what actually would be a good thing to add here is actually the commentaries well but I would probably do this after I stop recording this video so uh, yeah Congratulations guys, so we've just created a Google search results scraper and I personally I'm really excited about this so Basically, yeah, this is it. So I'll just add some commentaries here as always in one type scraper series So until the next video and take care. It's so cool, man <laughs> It's so cool